Good day to you ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the second module in the Jabra tutorial series. So in the first module we've been talking about reinforcement learning and now we're going to shift our gears a bit and start talking about statistical machine learning. So simply because I'm introducing this new module right now does not mean that um, we're going to stop our activities in the first module. Actually we're going to run these two in parallel. I just thought to introduce this early on because some of the concepts here will become important uh, when we actually start talking about advanced topics within reinforcement learning. Um, so of course you don't actually need to know anything about the first module to be able to follow this one because this module is running independently by itself. Um, so if you're just someone who came here and your interest is just to learn about machine learning, um, you can actually pick this up and just go with us. Um, so having said that, we can actually start with our uh, looking at our syllabus. And the first thing we notice that um, we're going to use a book by Bishop called Pattern Recognition and Machine Learning as our guide. And um, the thing is that we're going to start by introducing some basic things in statistics, such as um, some statistical distribution and probability, because we are going to actually need this arsenal of tools you know to actually tackle the more complicated problems that we're going to face later on right so it's not that every single problem that we have we have to kind of like uh, throw in some complicated neural network or machine learning algorithm at it uh, some problems we can solve them easily right uh, we can solve them with some things optimization techniques from linear algebra or whatever like um, of course machine learning algorithms actually have those running underneath them but sometimes the solution is just very simple and does not actually need any AI to actually learn uh, from data or whatever. Having said that, um, the focus of this, of course, is going to be on just looking at a pattern or looking at data set, right? And trying to discover like, what's the best approach, right? What are the techniques I need to use in order to tackle this data set? in a way that will give me uh, the greatest value that I can gain from it. Having said that, we're actually gonna start on pattern recognition and we're going to start, um, we're gonna start quite simply. Uh, we're gonna ask ourselves, what is pattern recognition in the first place? So this is kind of like, we want to discover some regularities in the data sets that we have, right? Um, by using some kind of computer algorithms and so on. But let me give you an example to kind of simplify things for you, right? So let's start with a simple example. So you, let's say you've got a handwritten digit, right? So I have an image here. So this is an image. This is the number two, right? I have another image. This is the number seven. Mm -hmm. This is the number six, and so on. And this is the number, let's say nine, right? So this is image number zero, image number one, image number two, all the way up to image number n. So think of this, uh, think that each one of this is an image, right? And they're handwritten digits, right? You wrote these digits down. So you want to take each of these digits, you want to feed it to some machine, right? To some computer or machine, and you want it to tell you what number is written on that image, right? Simple problem, handwritten images, uh, you want to just classify like what number is on this image. So a typical thing that we might want to do is, let's say we take this image, two right this is our image so we're gonna take this image and we're gonna fit it to some um, algorithm right and it's going to output so this is our input right and then algorithm and this is where the magic happens let's just call it magic and the output should be telling us that this is the number two. Well, the input was just an image of this. So this is the kind of problem that we might want to solve. 
So you might think to yourself, like, okay, this is conceptually you can think of uh, you can think of it as this problem, like, okay, um, how can I get an algorithm to be able to solve this kind of problem in the first place? You already notice something strange in this problem. Um, because this handwritten digit, as you can see, the two that I wrote here and the two that I wrote in this area. Um, let me, so the two that we have here and the two we have here, they're kind of different. So there are variations in the way that people can actually write, you know, uh, the numbers that they have, handwritten digits. But the algorithm is supposed to actually learn this kind of variations, right? The, the, that's the whole point. So what we have is a situation whereby we want to devise this algorithm. How do we do that, right? What are the steps we have to take in order to be able to solve this kind of problem? This actually um, is a pretty challenging problem in itself, like at least using conventional methods, like uh, what you may think, like you think about it yourself. If you have some background from uh, computer science or whatever like how would you go about solving this problem uh, without using any tools that are provided like from machine learning or whatever like so we are trying to discover like how do we use this information we have a bunch of images here how are we gonna use this information to make this algorithm learn that when this image comes in it is a two when this image comes in it is a seven and so on right we're not gonna go through this process right now on how to learn but there are certain representations that will actually become quite important right so the first thing we can note here is that we can actually represent so let's say you're given an image of the number two so this is an image right so first of all this is a you can say this is a 28 by 28 pixel image right right we have a 28 by 28 pixel image um first thing is how do we actually represent this uh image as well um the thing is that we see it as an image right we see this too as an image but the computer right so this is how we as humans see this image this is how we see this image but what the computer algorithm actually sees are just zeros and ones right so it just has you know a bunch of numbers more or less they don't have to be zeros and ones or whatever a bunch of numbers so it's like a matrix of size 28 by 28 right this is what the computer sees so we are seeing this image like this and of course we can automatically see ha ah, hey this is a two why because we have seen a lot of twos in our lives right so now we can just see even if someone writes this two in a very weird way we can still tell that this is a two but the computer just sees a bunch of numbers if it changes the matrix for those numbers changes so given that this is the way that the computer is actually saying this um how do we represent it in a way right how do we represent this information the way that the computer can actually make sense of uh, to devise an algorithm that it can actually output that the different variations of twos are still giving us twos right that's the main idea here so this is not a trivial problem um one way we can do uh, is kind of like let's just represent this as one vector with 784 numbers so 28 by 28 is 784 and we just represent it as one vector and so on right this is how we represent it well sure that's one way we can represent this information you can argue that this vector here and this vector here contain the same information of course some of the information here is actually lost try to think about what it is we don't have to talk about it right now but in the future this is going to be important anyway having said that that's one way we can represent this um, matrix here so 
let's actually devise what we had. So we had an image, right, of the number two. So it started off as an image. But when we feed it to a computer, right, when it goes into a computer, it appears as a 28 by 28 matrix. Uh, this 28 by 28, like the image can be any size, but we're just using this as a convention, like whatever. This is the image size that we're going with. Um, so it's a 28 by 28 image, so we can always resize it if it's a different size. And so on, of all these numbers, right? And then, after this, we said one thing we can do is flatten this into a vector, just one vector, of size 784. So we just flatten this 28 by 28 into a vector of size 784. So now this image is now being represented by this vector. So this vector represents this image. Wow. So we have this. Um, so what we can actually say is that when we have a vector like this, blah, 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 this is our first vector. This is the vector representation of the image when it's a 2. But because there might be a variations of 2, maybe some other vector here represents a 2. And we have another vector, and so on, uh, which represents a 4. We have another vector, which represents the number 7. So again, image to matrix to, ve uh, to this one-dimensional vector that we have. So all of these vectors have um, 784 elements, right? All of these vectors have 704 elements in them, right? And each of these vectors are re representing different images, right? So instead of writing them like this, um, I'm just going to say this is vector x1, vector x2, uh, vect all up to xn, right? And then this is what we're calling this. And then I'm just going to call this um, kind of like, we call them targets. So I'm just going to call this t1, t2, all the way up to tn, right? So that's what we have here. We have a bunch of vectors x1, x2, up to xn, right? And we have our targets t1, t2, up to tn. So what we can say is that this is the representation of an image that we have. And then this is the actual numbers that we're trying to predict. The idea is that if someone comes in with a new image, right? Someone comes in with a new image, we call it, um, let's say someone comes with a new image. Mm, let me use a different color for this just to illustrate the point. Someone comes with, with a new image. Uh, the image can be any number, whatever number it is. We want to feed this to whatever algorithm right we we want and then we want the output to be uh what's the actual number that's written on this image this is the output we want so how do we do that first we take this image we represent it as a uh, matrix and then represent it as a vector fit into an algorithm we get the number of whatever the output is supposed to be right it's quite a simple problem okay it's not a simple problem to solve, but a simple problem to understand. That's what I'm trying to say here. So, these things, our images and the targets that we have for those images, we call this the training set, right? So, the point of this lecture is not about how to, you don't actually have to focus on how do we actually solve this problem. You just need to focus on what these things are, right? What the certain terms we're going to use to describe some of these things. So this is our training set, right? And so we're calling this our training set. And we will have another set of new things that we haven't seen yet. And we'll call that the test set. But you don't have to worry about that right now. The idea is to develop an algorithm that is able to solve right categorize any new example of images and determine what number it is right 
So the thing is that our training set might consist of certain uh, images. Our tra training set might have a two that's like this, a two that's like that, and so on. This, right? This might be part of our training set. But the thing is that when we actually um, trying to predict, someone might come in and, and write uh, a funny looking two or whatever. But we want our algorithm to still be able to say, this is actually a two, right? Even though it never saw a two like this in the training set. And this is a concept that is known as generali generalization, right? In machine learning. So when we talk about generalization, we just, want, we just mean that um, even examples that we didn't see before, our algorithm should be able to classify them correctly, right? Even though we didn't see this kind of examples in the training set and so on. So that's the main idea here that we're trying to go through. Um, so one of the things uh, that we my face, uh, let me insert a new page. So one of the uh, things that we might face here, actually, going to the previous example, is that um, when we look at this, right, we represented, we had an image and we represented it as a, a vector of size 784. But the thing is that maybe we don't actually need all this information here, right? Um, maybe we only need certain parts of this vector to be able to predict, right? So this is something that is called like feature extraction. Feature extraction, we're talking about what can we extract from this image that will help us determine whether it's a 2 or a 4 or whatever. So you don't need to concern yourself with this at this point, like uh, the details of how it works, but just know that if given this image, there are certain things in this image, right, that we can extract that will help us determine whether it's a two. So we might not need to represent it by the whole vector and so on. This is kind of like um, something you just need to keep at the back of your mind. Right? So having said that, um, let's actually try to look at different kinds of problems that we may face, right? Um, so first of all, we've got a class of problems that are called supervised learning problems, right? So supervised learning problems is when we have a training set x1, x2, up to xn, right? And then we have a target t1, t2 up to Tn. So this is our training set, right? Our data set. So what this is telling us is if you have an example, for instance, if x1 is an image and the target is what category that image is, so you've got one image and it's a two, another image is a three, we're going to learn from this, pro uh, from this problem. We're going to analyze like, huh, okay, we're giving you examples of what the twos are, what the threes are, what the fours are. So if any time you're given a data set that's actually annotated, so you have an image like this, another image like that, and another image like this, okay? So, and it's annotated, this is two, this is three, this is a car, okay? So the point is, um, you have this data set it's annotated in this way so the machine is going to learn from this data set like how do you classify like if you get a new image like this mm, right you need to find like w what's the class of this image right is it a two is it a three or is it a car this is the question that we have and since we're learning from examples right the data set we have uh, is actually annotated as given as examples. That means um, that actually means that this is uh, a supervised learning problem. Supervised because we're learning from examples, right? But sometimes it might so happen that you're just given x1, x2, and x3 uh, up to xn. Sorry, this is what you're given. No targets, right? And then you're given a new instance, 
right so x1 x2 x3 this can also be an image whatever two three and so on but you don't know what the number is because you're not given the target it can be anything so now you're given these examples how do you actually classify them well you can't right sometimes this is an example of an unsupervised right unsupervised learning problem because you're just given um, what is x1 what is x2 uh, what is xn but you don't know what they are so you're just trying to find some patterns in this data set like um, which ones are related which ones are not and we can actually go through this kind of problems as well right so this is an example of an unsupervised learning problem and the last class of problems um, so this information is just um, this is a basic introduction you don't actually need to concern yourself with um, the details of what the stuff is but just kind of introducing it to you um, the last class of problem we're dealing with is um, uh, the also reinforcement learning problems and in this problems the idea here is that um, you have a reward function that's actually being triggered and this reward function is uh, actually learned by navigating through some environment and so on and you are trying to make the optimal decisions in that environment so right now i'm loosely explaining what this is there's a whole module on that so if you want to learn more about reinforcement learning please follow the lectures on module one so i'm not going to go talking about this deeply um, we're going to be focusing mostly on supervised and unsupervised learning problems right this is what we're going to be talking about so having said that um, this should give you a brief guide as to what kind of things we're going to be covering um, but as of now I'm going to stop this uh, lecture here and in the next lecture we're gonna start with our first topic which is polynomial curve fitting our first supervised learning problem so for now we're going to be tackling um, supervised learning problems so you don't need to concern yourself with anything else so we're gonna be assuming that we actually have this kind of you know data set that's here and we actually have some targets and we're trying to make some predictions based on this this is the kind of problems we're gonna be solving uh, so thank you